Hi, welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be running through the last installment of the KZ engine rebuild project. We're gonna be assembling all these little bits and pieces back onto our engine so it's ready to go on the car. So let's get to it. In the previous episode, which you can check out here, we assembled the bottom end of this engine, putting the gearbox back together and the crankshaft. And so now we're just gonna be working on the clutch assembly on primary drive, We've got the clutch basket and the clutch and this uh, gearbox housing to go on. Uh, this is obviously a broken shaft. And then we can start to put the clutch on. And then last but not least, the cylinder or piston ring, gudgeon pin, cylinder bolts. Done. Okay, so when I disassembled the engine, I've laid all the parts out so I can remember the order they all go in. You can do that as well. So what we want to do is this is our little ratchet port. It's going to go in here. Okay, and then it's kept in with these and this little plate. So there's a little bit of jiggling around. So I'm gonna just work and you can guys can watch at home. So we're just going to install the clutch housing now. Okay, so we've got some instant gasket here and we've put a nice bead of silicon onto the housing and we've cleaned both the parts with some scouring pad, a little bit of razor blade here and there, also two carburetor cleaner which primes the surface ready for the gasket sealer. And now we're ready to install the clutch basket and the housing onto the crankcase. So let's get to it. So the housing just slides over to the shaft onto the shaft and there's a couple of dowel pins as well for location just here and down here you can't see it and then you've just got to sort of jiggle the housing until it goes on there we go Ooh, bang. so I just had to rotate the clutch basket a little bit and that's it so now get the screws and do them up tight we should be good to go So last but not least, don't forget to torque these up, 10 newton meters for M6 cap screw. Now for the clutch basket and clutch shoe. First the thrust washer, now the clutch basket and shoes. You will have to give them a little bit of a, a jiggle on the spline, hoping. It's a bit of a uh, hold your tongue to the left sort of situation. And just 
a little bit of light pressure and you can, I'm just with my left hand turning the output shaft, which rotates this, uh, where the clutch, the spline down in here has to marry up. This is all just transmission and load. And then this is the last thing to go on. Okay, so some high strength Loctite. This bad boy is going to be on a bit of strain. A little dab of that. Thrust washer. Then I've got myself a new clutch nut. Right, and then we're going to have to hold this basket, so we're going to have to remove the shoes. Oops, Derek, you silly man. You can't put them in before you've done that nut up. So, remove all that shoes, clutch shoes, clutch discs, whatever you want to call them. Now I can get the uh, basket holding tool in. These just jack apart, just like so. Now I can hold the output shaft from rotating while I do this uh, nut up. And I will have to get a 19 millimeter socket. So get yourself a 19 millimeter socket and your big torque wrench and set it at 80 newton meters, 60 foot pounds. And do that nut up as tight as you can go. Done. So now we should be able to put all this back together. Remembering it goes the reverse order. So first up, little disc, then a friction disc. And a little guy. So using the rattle gun on a very slow setting is actually a good way to get the pressure on and then slowly just get that nut started. Now if it starts to get stiff because you've cross threaded it, you're in trouble, so take it very easy, push them on square. It was a lot easier. I was trying to do it with the T-bar at the start and I found that what was happening is I couldn't get enough of a rotation to get the thread started. So I could just push it on, push the nut onto the stud with the pressure from the rattle gun, and then just slowly turn the pressure up. And that's that. All right, next up, we're just gonna reassemble that top end, screw the barrel on, the cylinder head's already back together from before, we don't have to do that. Set the timing, double check these, put the carburetor, and then we should be ready to do the car engine install on the car. So grab some oil and just drop it down there on, on the conrod and down through the oil galleries for the main bearings. A little bit of lube's good, more's gotta be better as they say. And also on our little end bearing, just as we're reassembling everything, I'll put a little bit of extra oil. That's just two stroke oil. Then we can reinstall our 
our piston. With our piston pin pusher. Okay. Next up, we're going to insert our piston pin circlip. And we've got this little tool here from Rotax. And we just insert the piston pin circlip like so. And it's got a little uh, groove there to stop the circlip from flying out the end. And then we just insert that into the piston. Hold it very carefully. And we're just going to give it a light strike with a hammer. And that just fires the circlip into the circlip groove in the piston. And that's what stops the piston pin from falling out. Now, don't forget to, on the top of a two-stroke piston, there's normally an arrow, and it faces to the exhaust port. On these, it's the back. Where did I say? Yes, that's right, the exhaust port. Don't forget that, okay? It doesn't face to the direction that you travel or anything like that. It's for the exhaust port, and it's just so that the, the ring on the two-stroke doesn't grab inside the exhaust port as it goes over the, the opening. Otherwise, if you put it in fractal bunt, this will open up and get stuck in the engine and rip it all apart, and that will be terrible. Okay, so just oil up the piston ready for assembly. Some coat of oil like that. This will help the piston slide back in the bore. And the same inside the cylinder, you want some fresh oil. Then we're going to grab it, hold the ring in, and just slip the bore over the top. Just give it a little wiggle. That's it. That's it. Boom. We're back on. Now I do up the cylinder nuts and we should be good to go. Okay, next up we've got to install the rotor, the stator, and just double check that that ignition timing is set. Now we did mark the crankcases and the stator went before we pulled it apart so that we can put it back together. Now that's an easy way for you to do it at home, otherwise you, you should check it with a dial indicator. Okay, so you've got your little keyway here, that goes down into the crankshaft. Okay, that's for location and drive for your rotor here. Make sure that that's all nice and clean. Ready to go back together. And then when you slide it on, boom, perfect, okay? And we've got our little nut here, and I'm gonna just put a little drop. Now the taper will lock the rotor onto the shaft, but I just like to put a little tiny dab of Loctite under my nut. All right, it's tight. Now we can install our timing and just realign our marks. Okay, so once you've got your three nuts just nipped up, you should still be able to rotate your stator here. And I'm just gonna have a look here and rotate it ever so slowly up. Now you can see my marks lining up perfect. Boom. 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 Just like that. Right? Lock those guys off. Now I'm gonna show you how to double check it using a dial indicator. Okay, so now we are going to use our dial indicator here to double check the timing. We screw that into the spark plug hole. Righto, so now that we've got the indicator in, you can zero the gauge here. There at zero, so top dead center. You can see I'm rotating it through top and it goes backwards, top goes backwards. 
So you just rock the engine through top dead center, zero the gauge. Now you want to go before top dead center and this is the fire mark. So we're just going to make those two line up and read the gauge. And it should be 60 thou here because that's what we wrote in our notes. So we just get top dead center, go back to the 60 mark and just double check those marks and they should just be spot on. Okay, so now all you have to do is add all the auxiliary parts and this is a wrap. So let's get to that. So there you have it, the TM10B KZ engine all back together, new lay shaft, everything put together ready to go on the car. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, check out our videos, go to Facebook and Instagram at Power Republic or our website www.powerrepublic.com.au and grab yourself a t-shirt and a cap. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.